Hey folks, after using different type of bike racks for a while, one of them being this platform rack that holds onto the bikes by the top frame, I decided to move on to something a bit more expensive, actually quite a bit more expensive. So today I'm going to take a closer look at this Kuwat NV 2.0. The version that I have here is the base, which doesn't have the uh, repair stand here attached to the end. If you are to ship these boxes around the country, they are pretty heavy. The big box that includes the two bike rack, it's 59 pounds. The add-on is 46 pounds. Here at this end, you're gonna see the add-on and the rack uh, information respectively, uh, the main features. Also, you're gonna see that this is made in China or assembled in China but Kuwat is in Springfield, Missouri. As soon as you cut these straps holding the box together, you can remove the cover and here it is inside. Wow, pretty nicely packed for such a heavy part. What do we have here? This is how you should get uh, service in case you need it. I assume this little box here has the various bits and pieces and these should be all the other big parts you can see one of those front trays and yeah they're both one on top of the other that is the hitch portion of it with the hinge and i assume the other two parts of the trays are there at the bottom inside the small cardboard box you're gonna have the instructions then you get this uh, pivot uh, lever that i think uh, allows it to swing up or down you have the fat bike kit then you have this uh, end cap that also includes I think that's a six or an eight uh, hex uh, wrench you have another uh, wrench this is a six pretty sure three huge bolts with uh, nuts attached to them a small bolt or shorter bolt with another nut number four over there and finally you have a hitch lock you have the three keys and you have a handy beer opener that says quadrax.com. I put down the foam liner from the boxes so I don't scratch the parts. And here in the installation instructions, you'll see the name of all the parts, what's in the box. And step one being this end cap that I didn't really know what to do with. This one goes into the pivot assembly, this other end, and you just, uh, Push it in. If you look carefully, these are letters. The letters obviously will have to uh, be assembled with the corresponding parts. And you see them here all labeled nicely. The four bolts provided here, one is already installed and that's probably because they installed this arm. Then you have three more bolts that will keep these uh, parts together. You have the uh, six millimeter wrench over here. One confusing part about installation is, and I read about this in a forum, people can seem to figure out that this is the fourth nut that you're gonna need for the four bolts. Step two is to install these parts of the uh, bike trays onto the main beam, properly align, use those bolts. What I also read online is that this part is done easier with the whole thing upside down. One thing that I did, I put a little bit of uh, Loctite blue on the uh, thread of those uh, bolts. I know this is locking nuts, but uh, uh, out of habit I guess. So you're gonna have one nut over here then you have the long bolt starting right here on the opposite side is just the opposite. Bolt going over there and your nut is gonna get captured and stay in place right in there. In order to tighten them up I'm gonna have to lift up the beam a little bit just to align the holes. There's no torque specified for these so I guess you just tighten them until you they stop turning alternate one side to the other as you do this next is to install the other two parts this one with the kuat logo stealth over here is the furthest away from your receiver again one bolt from each side just alternate when you tighten them up 
both bike trays are installed. The one last thing that I am left to do is to install this pivot lever. This is keyed and what they say is to make sure that you have like an inch right up here. Use that bolt provided. I put a little Loctite as I said. So tighten this up. If all you have is a two bike rack, this would be the end of the installation. Pretty easy, isn't it? You have the keys here for your bike locks. This is held in place by a magnet. That's what that sticker says. Same key obviously will work here on your hitch lock. The MV Base add-on, it's only available for the two inch racks to add two more bikes. And as soon as you remove the straps, here it is. Pretty much a similar layout, very nicely packed parts. The beam is different. You can see this two huge uh, eight millimeter bolts that are gonna attach to the main component. As for what's in the accessories box, same thing, you have three bolts and the associated nuts, plus an extra nut, a six millimeter, eight millimeter customer service. And I just noticed that the serial number is also here on the back. Fat bike kit, the three keys again, and the installation instructions. Serial number on this one, by the way, it's also on the side of the main beam. I have it upside down because I truly believe that it's easier to install that way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install this and be back in a sec. And here they are installed upside down, not connected one to another yet. Uh, the installed weight, this one, the extension is 36 pounds, now it's 51, so 87 pounds altogether. That is for the base model that does not have the actual uh, stand, the repair stand. That one adds about 5 pounds to the whole assembly as per kuat. To make this look as one piece, all I have to do is to remove that cover from over there, put it here, and the two bolts over here, the eight millimeter bolts, just tighten the heck out of those, and that's gonna hold the two parts together. Rack inserted in the receiver, you can see there are the pin, and then you're gonna use this knob just to tighten it up. You tighten it until it's snug, and once you do that, this becomes pretty much one with your hitch. And here is the four bike rack ready to go. All I have to do is just to install the end cap that I've removed from the base. This is where the actual repair stand would go in if you buy that accessory. There's tons of videos talking about the features of this rack, so I'm not gonna mention them all, but uh, here's some dimensions. If I'm looking at that center beam, just for two bikes, that would be about 18 and a half uh, inches long. For the four bike version, that is 40 and a half inches long. Make sure you add about 11 and a half inches on top of that, and you will find the overall length of your bike rack from the hitch pin again. To my surprise, the distance between bikes here is not equal. I am talking about 11 and a half inches between bike one and bike two, and only about 10 and a half inches between bikes two, three, and four. Pivoting the rack up and down is done by pulling on this lever to lift up from here a little bit, and at that time, someone that doesn't hold the camera would have to reach out and pull on the lever. There's, I did it. Okay, so as soon as you do that, your bike is gonna your bike rack is gonna come straight up. Now look at that. Looking from the side, you can see that I don't have a whole lot of space. Tilting it back down is easier because you just use your foot, push on that lever to release it, and it clicks in place, horizontal position. Use that same lever to tilt the rack down. Highly, highly recommend to use someone help when doing it. The rear wheel sits right here on the surface. It's not protected in any way. As for this strap, it slides up and down for different wheel bases. And if you're wondering what this uh, eight millimeter uh, Allen key is for, that allows you to move these uh, front wheel cups up and down. So you loosen this up, and as soon as you do that, this is gonna allow you to have this lower position then you have a mid one, and then you can have this wheel further up. And here's that feature at work. You can see those uh, front wheel cups lowered over here to take care 
of the interference, handlebars, seats, no problems uh, here. 29 of wheels, I prefer that lower position of that uh, tray because it seems to grip the bike better, just to hold it in position better. The tire clamp has to be installed as close as possible to the fork. It is covered in rubber because it will most probably touch your fork. So if you're worried about that being scratched up, you might want to add some film over there. If you're using one of these uh, flexible mud guards like I, the one I have over here that won't interfere with your tar clamp in any way. 27.5 is very very similar. This one I found that you can clamp on the tire a bit further away from the fork so it won't touch it and it will still keep the bike secure. We've just completed a 500 mile trip and the bikes were safe and secure on the rack. You can see here the bike locks that can be attached to the frame. What can I tell you? Overall, I'm very happy with my purchase. Uh, I wish I bought this earlier. Uh, how about you guys? Uh, do you use a rack like this? Do you use Thule, 1UP or any other rack that would be more sophisticated than this? I would love to hear your opinion. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you found this useful, don't forget to like, subscribe and keep an eye on social media. And until next time, I will see you folks on the trails. Cheers, guys. Cheers.